Recording in progress. Hello, everyone who's watching and listening. Uh, this is a Johnny Branham. I'm an artist and learner based in Los Angeles. Um, along with Stacy Dawson Stearns, I co-hosted the Long Table that was part of Refest 2023, and I'm here to deliver some reflections and lingering thoughts, some residue, if you will, about the event. Um, I hadn't planned to use uh, Zoom captions initially as a way of recording this, but I was thinking about something that um, one participant in uh, the New York wing mentioned during the long table, uh, and they talked about describing and sharing work across the senses. That's a direct quote from them. Uh, and they linked that concern to disability justice specifically. So um, it got me to thinking about captioning and Zoom more uh, generally as a tool of access um, and thinking on an even broader scale about how questions of access um, have enabled assembly, uh, coming together, reflection, and synthesis, even and especially for folks who may not consider themselves marginalized. So as we return to um, the theme of this year's ReFest, which was Renew, um, I'm still thinking about uh, relation as something that beings make together across differences, right? Across genders, sexualities, nationalities, classes, abilities, etc. Or at least we'd hope so. One thing that we know and one thing that the work in this year's ReFest reminded us is that relation is not as easy as I might make it seem. It's not as ideal as I might make it seem. And it's not as smooth as one might hope. A lot of the work um, dealt with loss, fracture, recovery, and remembrance, literally putting things together again after they've been um, dismantled or upset by the forces of colonization, capitalism, um, and all their intendant operations. The folks who were gathered for the long table uh, had many different relationships to fracture. Indigenous artists talk often about colonization and the lands that have been stolen from them and are still occupied um, by settlers. I think of the black artists who talked about relationships to enslavement. I think about um, artists of various racial and ethnic backgrounds who talked about capitalist extraction more generally. And I think about all of the artists who were involved, who mentioned um, how these things intersect with questions of gender sexuality, class, and nationality. One thing that people really seem to be convicted about is that colonization uh, is an event that isn't just about the stealing of land, though it is very much about that. When we think about colonization, we're also talking about a violent disruption of the knowledges that people have had of themselves, the communities they were in, and the other beings that made their life possible. One thing we were reminded of, though, is that these forces haven't erased anyone's pasts. Rather, the past remains embedded in the present, and our goal is to figure out how we can use technology or technologies in order to return to these life-giving ways of being with one another. During the long table, um, I suggested that technology is simply a way of things or a way of getting things done. Uh, I reminded the group that technology comes from the Greek word techne, which means craft, right? So we talked about technology as whatever means people use to devise or restore um, ancient knowledges, and we could put ancient in quotes. But um, restoring ancient knowledges into the present, even if that attempt is partial or if it combines old and new ways of knowing, which almost always happens, right? As we discussed ways of bringing the past into the present or even imagining the future in the present and thinking about how all of these time scales are always working together, 
we kept circling around the idea of family and intimate relationship as one of the more accessible ways of recovering these knowledges from the past. I think family is a great place to dwell because it concerns how we are situated in the world. It concerns what we've inherited, often literally. And it concerns how we understand our relationship to race, our relationships to class, our relationships to nationality and gender and ethnicity and so on. There were a couple people who talked about the concept of forgiveness and thinking about our most intimate relations as a place to examine our wounds and, if possible, to begin to heal them. There are many artworks from this year's ReFest that stay with me. Um, some of them include Iman Person's Untitled Vessel, which was just wonderful to witness in person because it's a vessel that appears fractured, um, but actually gives off this really wonderful smell, um, which sort of harkens back to the plant-based forms that the work invokes. I'm also thinking of Kira Honorica's Coral Reef, I Am Presence, which was a digital uh, collage made with the assistance of AI and other digital technologies in order to think about how gender and transness specifically um, is a sort of reservoir of information about indigenous ways of knowing, whether past, present, or future. I also think about um, Marcus Quilin Nazario and Paul Donald's installation and performance called Macho Stereo, which deals very explicitly with the theme of forgiveness, um, as it might manifest in relationships between fathers and their sons. There are, of course, many more works in this year's ReFest that deal with these themes and other related ones. Um, but now I'm sitting with the residue of our time together at ReFest. And I hope that you continue to sit with the residue of this recounting or this reflection. I hope that even if you weren't there at ReFest in person or online, you can continue to search for the seeds of the past and the future that live in your present. <laughs>